then I'll call the meeting to order. And this is a virtual meeting it's being recorded on Zoom. And um, we'd like to identify all of the participants. Um, so I can try to read off everyone's name as I see them. Um, I'm Joanne Fischella. We have Margaret Hoffman, Rick Woodland, Peter Clay, Catherine Tinsley, Erica Ciampa, Gary Cheeseman, I believe. I just see Gary. Um, Dana Bacon. Please let me know if I'm mispronouncing names. Laura Sneed. Um, all right, there's someone whose name I'm not seeing. Deb Evans, Ernst Ashley, Sue Petrolia, Peter Clay. Catherine H. Anne Weeks, Anne Weeks is on um, from the planning board, but you know, I look like 617-359-4077. Okay, great, thank you. And Patrick Waddell and um, there's one or two that I can't read the name. So if I've missed someone, please let us know. Phil Calaruso is on. And anyone else or is that everyone? Marty Lowry's on. Okay, great. And um, Joanne, is someone named David? I don't know if it's David Anderson. It's Dave Anderson. It's David, David Anderson. Um, there's one other, uh, a Catherine H and diagnostics IP. I, I don't know if, I don't think that's Ann Weeks. I'm not sure whose phone that is. No, Ann Weeks is 617-359-4077, but yeah. I'm not diagnostic. No. Right. I was able, I was able to change your name in on your screen. So it says Ann Weeks. I think, um, I, I think diagnostics is Phil Colarusso. Okay. Oh, what happened to Phil? I'm, I'm here. I'm not diagnostics. No, oh, that's sorry, not Phil. Phil. No. Sorry, Phil. <laughs> no, we have Phil in person. All right. So I don't, if someone is named, has the screen name diagnostics IP, would you, add, would you be able to identify yourself? I think they are muted. Yep. I've asked them to unmute. I don't know. It, I, it doesn't really matter. I don't, it's not a committee member. I don't believe. They were on our select board meeting last night. Okay. All right. So it's not a committee member. Okay. okay. Very good. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight and um, welcome to all of you. Um, we have uh, Laura Schmid from uh, JM Goldson, um, the planning uh, consultant for the master plan, who's going to uh, start us off. Um, Laura, I'll turn it over to you. Joanne, sure. Mary so, um, one quick question. Mark, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it sounds going through the list that we may have quorums from other committees. So, I just reminded that only the uh, representative designated can participate. The others just have to listen in so that we don't have open meeting violations. So, I think yeah. we got two select board members. I'll speak. And then, uh, do we have a quorum from planning board that we have to be aware of? We do. We have four members of the planning board here tonight. So um, planning board, just pick your two that will speak. Uh, I'm just listening. This is Anne. I think I said this before, but I'm just listening in to hear how it's going. I'm not going to speak space. Great. I probably also have to drop off because of kid stuff. So I'll also just attend as a member of the public, if that's all right. That's fine. So that means that uh, P. Clay and Rick Woodland will be the planning board members. Okay, um, Gary, I don't know. Do you think that's okay with Peter's also a yeah, board so, member? So I'll just listen just to make sure there's no complaints. So okay. you got to right. for both seats. There's not a lot. There's yeah. not going to be much voting yeah. tonight. So you, right. you, you should be okay. Right. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, Laura. Yeah, so if um, Margaret can um, stop sharing her screen or if it's Joanne, um, then I'll share 
There we go. I'll share mine. I pull it up. Okay. Oh, I fiddle with my buttons here. There we go. Okay. Has everybody seen seeing that okay? Okay, so the plan for my portion of the program today so, is oh, oh, yeah. Just, no, we're not now. seeing it, Laura. I'm. I can see it now. Can you see it? I can, yeah, see, it I can see it now. All right. Okay, we good? Yep. Okay, good. Um, so what I'd like to do tonight, I know we got a, a pretty long agenda, um, but my portion of the program tonight is to update everyone on the project schedule, and. Um, do a quick over recap of the activity that you did last meeting and cover some of the highlights from the focus groups that we've done. Just a, you know, a reminder that that, that was really a, a, you know, a smaller scale fact finding um, uh, project for us just to get the lay of the land. It's not considered to be kind of broad public engagement. It was meant to be a smaller group of people, but we can cover what, what themes we heard. And then we'll do a group activity around that you got ahead of time, right, about the um, different topics and the existing conditions, um, top problems and challenges. I won't ask you to do an interactive mirror board like I did last time. I will share a mirror board, but I will be the one to, to type and enter things in. And so whether or not you can see the screen or not, or if you're on the phone or not, you can just kind of speak to what you have thought about for those. Um, and I'll just, just record and document and listen right. for that. Excuse me, and then, before, before you go on, um, I'm having trouble seeing the presentation. I'm seeing um, it, that all, this, all the participants. Uh oh, okay, hang on. Oh, yeah, um, Laura, we're seeing your Zoom screen. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. oh okay. That's funny. I'm not sure what, what's happening Let me there. Let try this again. Let me try this again. And why does it, it keeps wanting to switch it over? All right, how's that? Okay, that does it. Now I can see it. Is that better? Yeah. <laughs> technical, our technical issues. Okay, there, I think we're good. Okay, um, have a little, anyway, have a little update on the naming contest and, and the photos and go over some uh, of the forum details that we're working on and arrange and organize outreach for the upcoming forum. And then um, I can show you a couple of the new options for uh, proposed logos. Okay, so here we are in August. Um, the schedule's been tweaked a little bit just because we're talking about different topics at somewhat different times. Um, the We are continuing to work on the existing conditions report. Um, to, tonight we're going to talk about the kind of engagement piece of things um, and next week we're going to have an internal kind of brainstorming session with our economic development consultant too and just look through some of the um, common themes and things that we're we're seeing across all the different topics um, and Meanwhile, um, we'll have you start doing some outreach for the upcoming community forum. I think we just have to confirm the location, um, but we should start on that um, outreach soon so that there's plenty of time for people to get it on their calendars because I know the fall fills up pretty quickly for people. And then we would like to schedule a September committee meeting with you all so that we can, when we finish up the final sort of final first draft, because it certainly won't be the final draft, but the final first draft of the existing conditions, we can then have a meeting where we get together and discuss discuss that, get any feedback from you on that, as well as talk through the community forum and what to expect in that and specific activities that we'll, we'll be doing there. Um, that we haven't designed what that forum's gonna look like just yet, so it'd be helpful to, um, have a meeting in September where we present you with different ideas that we're thinking of for, for um, that kind of open house um, public forum. We do have a general concepts that we'll talk about tonight, but um, the exact activities we want to discuss with you in September. And we're on track to, after we have our community forum, um, 
to share their pros and cons and concerns and vision for the future. Um, then we'd be presenting a updated draft of the existing conditions report to the planning board toward the end of October. Um, right now I have October 21st on the, on the schedule, but I don't know that that's been confirmed yet. So we have to kind of confirm that. Um, okay, so are there any questions on the schedule? Hearing none. All right. Um, so the special uh, places and opportunity areas that we did last time, I spelled out kind of everything that was transcribed, everything that we heard. Some was some things were mentioned more than once, but I only listed them once here, um, and tried to group them according to themes. So, um, you know, open space is clearly an, a, a strength and an asset to Wenham. There's so um, much beautiful natural um, resources in town. Um, you've got some historic, uh, historic, well, um, uh, yeah, historic um, assets as well. And um, town facilities that you'd like to see preserved, the tea house is special to people, the parks and um, large farms. And then of course the water. So they all kind of center with the exception of the tea house, which is um, uh, you know, a unique asset in the community, but mostly it's centered around these kind of open space and natural resources and historic resources. And then some opportunity areas, the Boulder Lane um, parcel that's down, um, let's see if I can get, like I think that's what this is right down there. Um, the Iron Rail spot, the MBTA station area with the new zoning that is um, uh, going to be for all MBTA communities, um, more or less required to do. Um, the West Wyden Park we know is getting improved, at least the playground portion of it has some opportunities there. Um, the Streeter property and the Haley properties are large parcels that could be some opportunity for, um, in general, having land for Habitat for Humanity. <clears throat> Other large tracts of privately owned in, in West Wenham may be an opportunity as those families um, kind of might be retiring, moving on, or downsizing. Um, Topsfield Road in 1A. I mean, a lot of these are centered around like, just creative ideas for economic development and finding land for that. Um, bike trails, the town center as one of the commercial areas. Um, Pinkley Park, the gardens um, in particular were cited there. Um, it's one of these that's kind of both. Um, and uh, the Notre Dame Children's Class next to Penguin Hall, the Gordon College land, expanding satellite commercial areas and municipal properties. So municipal properties is that probably another one of those that seems like it's kind of on both. So there's some <clears throat> special places that also could use some, <clears throat> maybe some tweaking or some betterment. And then a lot of the opportunity areas center around ideas for, um, economic development and, and expanding beyond kind of the single family residential or, or open space um, that the town is comprised of now. Any questions or comments on our activity from last time? Uh, yep, there are some larger tracts of privately owned land outside of West Wenham as well. So I would just say in Wenham in general, okay. or, or just take out in West Wenham. And I think it's Notre Dame Children's School. Okay. It's a preschool, or it was a preschool. It's, it's, actually, it's actually Notre Dame Children's Class. It's owned it? by the Sisters of Notre Dame. Um, yep. It's not actually an active preschool now. Right. Yeah. Um, the only other thought I have is that, um, Laura, I think you mentioned at the beginning that this identifies all of the special places and opportunity areas that were mentioned, but some of them were mentioned many, many times. Um, I think open space was one of those, and this doesn't really capture it, but I'm sure that you will give that uh, a focus or a way to capture that um, when this is documented in existing conditions. Yes, and you know this is um, 
something that we can also replicate potentially in the, um, you know, when we do a public forum and things too. So um, this, this sort of idea is something we can use also at the larger um, public, but yes, um, you know, and it's for sure open space came up again and again, but of course, um, iron rail um, was another one that came up a lot, bolted lane um, and so forth. But yeah, I can um, make a note of the magnitude or the number of responses. Although we didn't all get them in last time, so. Yeah, I did look at both of like posted notes that I did on the side as well as the mural board. So hopefully I, I always, I tried to capture all the notes, um, but it could be that I missed one or two, but I, I hopefully this captures the- No, I think we people. just weren't able technically to get them all up there. Yeah, so, but we did kind of verbally go around and I tried to, yeah, at least capture it in, in notes, but it's, it's yeah, it's not an, not an exact science. Um, okay, so um, talking about phase one research. So the website I, um, is more, I mean, it's in place, it's live. Um, I think that there's an opportunity, Joanne suggested to, maybe Joanne, maybe you wanna talk to your idea about the welcome message. <clears throat> well, um, I just thought it would be um, a, a nice idea to have on the homepage of the website a statement, um, a more personalized statement about the master plan um, for Wenham. And I thought it would be great if um, it came from, for instance, the planning board, and I suggested to Margaret and she um, brought it to Anne Weeks and um, Anne had some great ideas on a draft that I started. And then um, I, I think um, it could go on the website either next to this introduction that's already there, or I don't know if you need both. It's up to you to decide, but, um, or maybe um, Anne and others have an opinion about that. Um, but I just thought it would be, a nice way to both invite the public to participate in the master plan, explain what the master plan is, why it's important to the community and get them engaged early because I think that's our biggest challenge right now. Um, Joanne, do you want me to bring that document up? Um, it hasn't been fully vetted, it hasn't been edited yet, but did you want me to bring your version so, up? Or? So Joanne, I edited, um, this is Anne, I did edit your draft yeah. a little bit this afternoon um and I, i'm not wedded to any of the edits it was more suggestion um i would say that um from my perspective this it, i don't think it should be i think the invitation to broad community participation shouldn't be buried and i don't mean to say that it would be buried in the advisory committee's website necessarily but i would like to make a pitch for it to be like right on the town's homepage because mm -hmm. I think that's how people are going to hear about it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'll put myself back idea. on mute. I think that's a great idea. And um, if, if Margaret, if you're able to bring up the version that Anne edited, I, I agreed with all of her edits. I thought it, it improved it and um, made it a stronger statement. Yeah, you can certainly put it in both places too. But yeah, I think that's that's right to sort of put it on the homepage is gonna be more visible for sure. And get people to click to yeah. get it to the website. And we, we can do that. We'll put that up on there for sure. Um, we, I was just waiting for the website to get, you know, where we're ready to, to launch it. And then we'll put in, we will put a, um, a link to it on the front page of the website. And I'm gonna ask that it stays on the front page because sometimes um, as things get added, then it gets dropped down mm -hmm. and eventually disappears. So um, just let me see if I can pull this up. Give me one second. I have to go between um, two platforms. Back here. Hold on, now I have to, wait a minute. You know what? I don't think I'm gonna be able to get it up on this. I apologize. 
Uh, I apologize, Joanne. I thought I had it on my. Um, well, appreciate you turning on a remote desktop. Sent, would uh, maybe we could send it out to everyone later? I will. Um, I'll I'll send that out to everyone. Actually, I might be able to. I might be able to do that now. Okay. Well, um, oh, make sure I'm on, am I unmuted? Yes. Okay. Good. Um, meanwhile, um, so I'll wait, I'll wait then I'll wait for that final language and we certainly can put it on the website, master plan, and, you know, website, and then you can also put it on the homepage. Um, so just, yeah, send it to me whenever it's ready. Okay. Um, for the focus groups that those were conducted um, between July 12th and the 26th. There were six focus groups with a total of 22 participants total, um, which again, it was sort of small by design. Um, and the topics were transportation, housing, historic and cultural resources, uh, sustainability, natural resources, water and energy as kind of all one, uh, land use and open space and rec. Um, just to give us an initial, um, uh, taste of some of the issues in those different categories. And then interviews, I did the interviews, there were 16 of them be uh, between July 14th and August 18th. I focused on department heads and managers. Um, and I, so I done really from the perspective of municipal services and facilities. So I had half hour interviews with the superintendent of schools, the police chief, the conservation and open space coordinator, the Parks and Rec Director, the Library Director, the Town Administrator, the Finance Director, the Planning Coordinator, Margaret, um, the Library Director, the Town Administrator, the, uh, oh, I, did I, I already listed those, sorry, Energy Manager, Town Clerk, Building Manager, Council and Aging Director, Building Commissioner and Zoning Enforcement Officer, Water Supervisor, the DBW Director, and the Fire Chief. So I feel like I got a pretty good um, baseline from all those different departments. Um, so it was really helpful. And I, I'm going to sit down and actually write that <laughs> section of the report. Whoa, sorry, I didn't mean to like make everyone dizzy. Okay, so for the focus groups, some of the key findings, and I'm just going to talk at a really high level, I think you all should have received the full focus group summary with all of the details. So I won't go into it too much tonight, but talk about some of the key high level themes that kind of work across different groups. Um, that Wenham's community character, it's small town feel, the scenic landscape, those are really strengths to preserve. Um, there's a strong interest in wanting to maintain that. Um, open space was mentioned in nearly every focus group is a huge asset to the town and independently by participants as the main reason why they chose to live in Wenham. So that's clearly an important strength. And it also came up that a central communication system is desired. Um, nearly every focus group had a conversation about access to information about town happenings. And many participants noted it can be difficult to find information about community events. And they shared an interest in some sort of more centralized location to find that information. Um, and there was a desire to have more resources that appeal to a wider uh, range of ages. So they were saying, you know, it's a great place to raise a family, it has a strong school system. Um, but, you know, what is, there were some concerns like, what are some of the, what's holding people here? What's keeping them in Wenham for the long term? Um, besides just long standing family connections, um, they, we're interested in a, you know, some social activity, um, more affordable housing for young and single people and older adults. Um, that lack of affordable housing really has contributed um, at least the perception of there being less age diversity in town. Um, and on that note, housing uh, uh, affordability and sort of being, you know, the high cost of housing really and pressures on municipal finances, are, those two are both, um, connected, but also separate issues. Um, those are challenges for the town. And um, throughout the focus groups, participants continued to name that the, the, the cost of housing and land 
um, being affordable and municipal finances um, as things that the town needed to overcome. Um, there's a lack of a housing that is uh, um, affordable. And by affordable, I mean really so that someone of any income, doesn't matter high, low or middle, being able to spend no more than 30% of your annual income on housing. Um, and also that there's not any real diversity, much diversity in the housing stock. There's not a lot of choice. It's a lot, a lot of single family homes um, and a perception at least that that's been leading to a more homogenous um, population um, and, and one that's gonna be higher income because those are the people who can afford to live in Wenham. And so, but similarly, there's concerns that the limit, there's a limit, right, to the municipal budget. And and there's, um, uh, you know, there's restrictions to sort of growth and development. And one of those restrictions is a, is a I mean, it's a serious um, uh, barrier, right, is the lack of water and sewer infrastructure. Um, and the fact that you rely, you know, well, water and septic systems. So um, that's, something that the community is going to have to think creatively over how to overcome if they want to see more development and kind of where that development would happen. And future collaborations with Hamilton uh, could be an opportunity. I think this is the town is already doing in many areas and has talked about in the in the past. Um, but the participants even had a difficulty sometimes separating Wenham from Hamilton, you know, when discussing um, each topic and you collaborate and share several resources. And so there was some focus on how there could be potential and further pooling of resources and combining of additional services that might help um, lower the residential tax burden. Um, but I also know that there's all kinds of complexities that come with sort of shared municipal services and um, it's, it's not uh, always easy, but there are some benefits to it as well. And then this so-called nimbyism or not in my backyard ism um, was a source of frustration for some of the participants that it's, you know, that there's a group, there can be so a small group of people, maybe that's different every time, but that have been able to block um, other efforts, prior efforts to implement changes. And uh, obviously, you care very deeply about open space and natural resources and history and culture and sustainability. Um, but there's also um, a frustration with like legal recourse being used to block um, change and, and new ideas. So that is um, a source of frustration and a barrier that the focus groups mentioned. Uh, any? Yeah. Laura, uh, excuse me. Um, Joanne, I don't know if you can see Rick Woodland has his hand up. Can you see that on your screen, Joanne? You're muted, Joanne, sorry. Um, Rick, I'm sorry, I didn't see your hand. Um, did you have a comment or question? I did. I'm, uh, Laura, hi, I'm back a screen on the constituents you've interviewed so far. Um, have you reached out? I, I know you made a great effort on reaching out um, appointed people in town hall, but have you reached out to the different boards and committees as well to get their take on things like the Affordable Housing Trust, the um, Housing Board, the Open Space? Like some of those committees actually have master plan documents already. Yeah, so a lot of those groups and individuals were invited to participate in the focus groups. Obviously not every one of them was able to attend and the numbers on the focus groups were, were capped. But uh, that's really part of the more aggressive outreach we wanna do also to get people to, into the community forum and some of the other engagement activities that we'll be doing moving forward, especially for, you know, like you said, visioning future goals, future strategies. I'm sure there's a lot of materials and lots of good insight out there. So I think that all of that, those, all of those groups, all of the above, all the boards and committee members should receive um, not only a, you know, an emailed invitation, but for those of you who are, sit on those boards and committees or know individuals on those boards and committees, really a personal invite to, um, you know, if every one of you reached out to 10 um, people you knew in town um, to come to the community forum, you know, we would get 
uh, a pretty good turnout, I would think. So um, yeah, my thing is I I, I really I, I'm kind of focused on them right now because things like FinCom, uh, they're vital in getting their support of you know going forward. So whatever you can do to help get them more involved and uh, get them on record would be greatly appreciated. Yeah, and definitely, and all of, um, you know, there's going to be moments of time, especially when each um, major phase is completed, you know, with the existing conditions report or the vision and goals report, um, where there's kind of a more public comment period too. So you all get the first pass at everything to review, but then we do want wider feedback on, on what we've heard too. And we try to incorporate rounds of changes into those documents. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on that? Yeah. Okay, so time for our fun group activity. Um, hopefully you all got your homework. Um, hopefully I won't mess up my stuff here. Um, but I know you've all probably thought about this, whether or not you wrote it down. Um, on your some of your top problems and challenges. So where we were for the strengths and opportunities now we're really focusing in and maybe it doesn't keep you up at night, but that's the expression, right? What are you really concerned about um, on each of these topics? Um, that would be really helpful for us. It, just to kind of brainstorm. Um, so um, let's think how best to do this. I mean, we could go I, you know, topic by topic, I guess. Um, and uh, I'm more here to listen, I guess. And I don't know that we have to go in any particular order, but you can just kind of unmute yourself and go, I would say. Laura, uh, this yeah. is Peter Clay. Did you say that that we were sent an exercise that we were sent this earlier? Yes, yeah, you received, uh, it was just a PDF document. And then I think uh, another individual sent around the actual word, a word version, which in the future I will send out something that can be edited because I think that was challenging for some folks, just so you can kind of see that this was an activity that we'd be doing tonight. Um, you didn't have to like fill it out ahead of time, but I we was mostly there to prompt your thinking ahead of time. Did the rest of you receive it? Yeah, okay, I'm seeing some nodding heads, so that's good. Um, well, economic development ought to be an, uh, uh, you know, an easy one, because I know that's a concern. Um, Deb, I see your hand up. Trying to unmute. Um, can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to make the first suggestion on economic development, if that's okay, if we're rolling with that. Yeah, go for it. One of, I see one of the biggest problems facing our town is that Wenham has the highest tax rate in Essex County. And I think that permeates a lot of the other um, areas because obviously the fiscal limitations on town government to mostly residential taxpayers, as well as the impact that that has on um, affordability to live here. It also, for those of us that live here, that being the highest tax rate in Essex County will impact the people that live here in a negative fashion, in my opinion, in the long run, if, um, something doesn't happen we're going to we're going to really kind of repel people from our coming to our community and once a community stops growing it it dies all right and for um think of speed i would say um, let's have people, if that, I'm assuming this was already probably on a lot of people's lists, but if you have something new to add, um, or a slightly different, yeah, maybe we'll just add two. 
Um, Laura, I can add to that. <clears throat> um, I'd say um, generating additional revenues um, to meet budget needs. I'll say how to, so it's sort of raised as the concern. Yeah, go, go ahead, Phil. Uh, so I have finding acceptable or available land um, when considering environmental aesthetic and zoning, current zoning regulations for development. That um, Phil at Sioux Petrolia, is that um, uh, business development, downtown development, or I mean, um, I don't know, like which space we're thinking about? Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking, I mean, if we're talking about economic, I'm thinking commercial. Commercial. Um, but I guess it doesn't need to be restricted to that. And I'm, I'm not suggesting we change any of our regulations. <laughs> That's, that's not what I'm saying. Um, so please don't interpret it that way. Well, I think we need, we definitely need some economic development because that's really the only way we're going to get more taxes, right? In there's just, there's just no other way around it. Um, so I guess to dig a little deeper, but not too deep is we're talking about, um, the downtown, you know, stores and things like that. We're also talking about some business development, which would probably be, you know, in the 128 area, somewhere sort of close to, to commutable. Um, there's a lot of different kinds of development. Um, so I, I don't know how viable any of those are, but No, we don't. Having a, having we don't. a nice business in town or, or, you know, somewhere in the, in the area would be lovely. Right. <laughs> I, I had another one, which was having commercial development that's consistent with the character of when I'm and not turning us up into North Beverly. Yeah. I think a, this is Rick, a, a concern I have is how do you change the um, opinion of a town that doesn't have any commercial development and hasn't to this point been super opposed to that type of development, how do you get the town to accept it? And what are the steps to acceptance? Um, and what kind of development, it, you know, what kind of business it is? Correct, based on what, yes. I also kind of think, I know there was some discussion last time that I wasn't um, able to uh, attend. I, I, in terms of uh, economic development, in terms of businesses and stores and storefronts and stuff, I, I, I would love to develop, in my opinion, a, a more robust downtown um, than scattered. I mean, scattered would be nice for convenience, but it would be lovely to have a a downtown where you could do some shopping and hang out and there'd be a farmer's market and you know i don't know if there's space but it'd be lovely to have a place where people gather as a matter of course and you can bump into friends and yeah so um, so how can we think about this in terms of a concern or an issue so one of the things that i've heard about the down concerns about the downtown business development is I mean, sure, there's like space concerns, right? But also parking concerns is another one that I've heard. Yeah. And I think in considering downtown development, you have to consider traffic concerns also. It's a very small area to get in and out of. Birds, did you have a comment also? Uh, there's some proposals for some very dense residential um, development right now, and that would be a, an economic boost, but I'm not sure that's very much in keeping with the town. So, uh, you know, dense residential development is, you know, a, a potential opportunity, but it's also uh, a potential for significant uh, change in our ca town character.
Thank you. Um, I have a few things on this. Um, one, how do we build a commercial base creatively with the least amount of visual change to the community? Two, how do we capitalize on a post COVID work from home situation for many of our white collar residents? What does this mean for increased or decreased demand around things like commuter rail, parking, shopping services and the commuter rail lot is pretty empty these days, for example. Um, and how do we build community for the people who were previously mostly using it as a bedroom community, like commuting into Boston and not here a lot. So particularly um, men and working women. And then what kind of recreational and tourist improvements and efforts could be made to market Wenham to outsiders and give them opportunities to spend money locally? And what can we learn from neighboring towns or ways to potentially partner with them on that? And not just towns, but entities. Um, there are some groups that do regional tourist attractions and um, events like the, the Rails to Trails. And I'm not sure how much one is involved. Yeah, so kind of capitalizing on your strength, which is your open space. So some more of kind of an ecotourism spin or other creative ideas. Okay, and I don't want to, I'm going to somewhat limit, I will let DJ, I, I see you have your hand up, um, but I also want to think about time. So I'm going to try to move us along, maybe a little, I know we could talk about all these topics forever, but I'm going to try to keep us to maybe like five minutes, a topic just to make sure we don't spend too much time on this activity. Okay, go for it. Okay, so very quickly, even if we identify land and we overcome community resistance to types of economic development, how what the challenge I think is still, how do we invite and incentivize these businesses to come to Wenham? Um, I'm not sure they're lined up at the door yet. So how would, how would we actually get them to come here? All right. Awesome. Okay. I feel like we're kind of in the swing of it now. So moving on to historic and cultural resources, top problems and challenges. Um, I'm happy to start on this. So how do we brand Wenham in terms of its cultural and historic resources and open spaces, like some things like our very old stone walls, which I love, our women's history, equestrian trails, I can't, ice making history are not all that well known. And the most frequent thing I hear from people when I say we live in Wenham is where's Wenham? Like people literally have never heard of it or they think it's Wareham. Yeah, Kristen, to your point, I was asked that actually at the North Shore Mall in Peabody. Um, <laughs> which kind of shocked me that somebody didn't know where Wenham was. Um, building off, I, this is this kind of, um, I, this may be in line with what Kristen is speaking, is speaking about, but um, one of the things that I have, I mean, I think we have a lot of great cultural resources and historic resources, so I didn't, uh, the only thing that I thought we could do better is that we could do more to promote our historic resources. We have a lot of historic home in, homes in town, and I think a lot of people in town were pleasantly surprised by the housing inventory that was done, um, the historic housing inventory. Um, and, you know, I think uh, Ipswich does a great job with some of their historic homes. Um, so that was my only, my only thought. I also thought it would be great to have more community events and gatherings. Um, maybe, you know, more joint events with the museum and the tea house and um, some of our, you know, historic resources, maybe around the holidays, or there's so many opportunities. And, and again, Ipswich and Newburyport do a great job um, with that. Over here. I think, I think one of the challenges we have to more uh, commercial development along Main Street is that it is a complete historic district. So we need to maybe review the importance of a historic district versus the importance of commercial development. And how do we make a, a, a trade there that's beneficial to both, 
both interests? Should the center of town be moved down to the Henderson's Ave and be a continuation? There is space, there is space there, right? Not a popular opinion. No, I'm sorry. I, I didn't quite hear everything you said. Would you mind um, saying that? So at, at the other end of Main Street, there is commercial development, and it may be easier to extend commercial development from the Hamilton side into Wenham as opposed to the center of Wenham. Mm -hmm. And there are large parcels there. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? I've talked to other towns um, in open space land, and they've they were talking about linking our trail systems together, whether it be you know Beverly, um, uh, Hamilton, Essex, uh, Danvers, uh, more linked trails. We have a, a number of trails, but very few connect um, to other places. Rail trail does, of course. I also think our farms and those kinds of places are really exciting uh, places of destination places for a lot of families. Um, maybe we partner with some of them to do some, you know, day long events or something or I don't know, but feels like oh. those are great resources that we could, um, you know, add to. So if I'm framing that as a concern, would that be the farms are an underutilized, like under, under I don't know, sounds like they're utilized um, and appreciated, but they're not, um, there's an opportunity there for- There's more, an opportunity for, I think- Local, right? Expanding it to the region? Uh, I think it's, a, you could easily make some certain events become a regional event, a go-to, you know, like for whatever it is, October or berry season or some, I don't know what, what it is, but um, it's kind of big. But I feel like, I feel like places of gathering and fun will bring others in, um, you know, for those kinds of events that, I mean, not everybody has the farms that we have or, open spaces or. Mm -hmm. May want to reconsider our agricultural restrictions as well on how much of the produce needs to be produced in Wenham to, to have a farm stand. I, I, I don't know if this is still an issue. It was an issue with um, Canaan Farms previously that there's a percentage that has to come from that farm. And obviously tender crop is a very large farm conglomerate. Um, if you ease some of those restrictions, maybe that land, instead of being sunflowers, now becomes an activity park like the uh, like Moraney Farm or um, Russell Orchards. Tip Top Tulips, which has become an amazing regional draw in Ipswich. All right. Well, are there any last parting thoughts on historic and cultural before we move to housing? All right, so what are you worried about for housing? There's gotta be some worries there. We'll take. What's that? I have notes. <laughs> the developer is coming to town. Yeah. So one, what does a recent water study mean for us in terms of opportunities? Um, I'm still learning about that and digesting that. Um, what are the new state rules around the MBTA station going to mean for us? I think we all need to know that. So we're on the same page. Um, and then of course the cost of living in Wenham is extremely high, increasing housing prices make it even harder for newer residents, um, which could also really change the dynamic of who's living here. Like I think we've had a lot of one worker commuter and then one stay-at-home parent. Um, but now it's getting to be pretty unaffordable for a lot of people to do that. So you've got 
two people, two parents working, and there are not a lot of childcare opportunities. Um, also, currently, people can create accessory apartments in 1M, but they're not permanently passed, which makes it very risky to make that investment when you don't know if it's going to be approved for the future. And I think we've been seeing them as like, that's where grandma lives before she dies or something or goes into a home. Um, but those could be a great opportunity for empty nesters. I've, I read about a guy who um, made an accessory apartment that he lived in and then rented out his house. Um, or for younger people, young couples, um, you know, it, it would just give some more affordable options while making owning a primarily single family home more affordable to people without turning them into two legal two family homes that could get converted into condos, which I think would be problematic. Um, another thing to look at would be Airbnb and other rental opportunities, which um, we had a vote at town meeting a few years ago that was pretty hostile to those kinds of rentals, but it got shut down by the people who were like, yeah, we would like some flexibility to have, have some Airbnbs. So I think um, looking at that is both a revenue opportunity and could help people um, with the cost of living here. Um, so short-term yeah. rentals yeah. is an opportunity, but also a concern? Yeah. At least for some residents, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there in other places, there have been, you know, crazy parties and deaths and like fires or, you know, who knows. And so I think those were some of the concerns people have. I think one concern we need to think about in housing is the impact on the schools um, in terms of, you know, number of kids going to schools and then that cost rising or the balancing of the tax revenue versus the school cost. Uh, I think there's been, a, I've heard a lot of different discussions about whether it should be over 65 or 55 or there's gonna be a lot of kids or, you know, just general conversation around that. And I don't know, I don't know the balance. So sort of the fiscal impacts of housing. Or more housing and and tying into that just understanding where enrollment is because my understanding is it's been declining so you know if we have decline 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 in our enrollment and costs up 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 um fewer families is not necessarily a good thing a lot of our, our school cost is fixed cost our, our facilities um and more students don't really impact that uh, the payroll as well. But um, we also, in declining enrollment, we also lose curriculum. So is increasing enrollment desirable? That's what I don't know. It's a good, good, I mean, I'm sure it is desirable to keep things moving. I just don't know how that algorithm works out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do think it's important to understand the economies of scale in housing, especially as it relates to school costs and other costs there. You're absolutely right, Patrick, there are definitely fixed costs and it's not like one extra kid. There is a there is an economies of scale question when it comes to education. And I know that we are bordering on being practically too small. I also feel like we should really look at those trends because what was reported previously is not what we're seeing in terms of current enrollment. And several of the developments proposed are over 55. So adding something to the tax base, but not adding any kids to the school and the school's probably not overcrowded. All good questions. Okay, any parting thoughts on housing? Well, there's still the water issue. Right. So kind of water capacity issue. And on that, should we also throw the wastewater capacity? Because there's drinking water, but there's also wastewater. So kind of both, I would imagine. Yeah, they go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. 
Well, we don't uh, have any wastewater systems in town, just our septic, which obviously can get overwhelmed at some point. Right. Well, it also takes a certain amount of space. So if you want to do commercial or you want to do any kind of, you know, different types of housing, you need more space or different types of septic system that adds to the cost of the overall project and right. so on. You. Yeah. And I think the I think any housing and development that happens needs to be carefully monitored for sustainability. So that's not so much a concern as more of a desire for more. Well, the more sustainable they are, the you know, the more there it goes to zoning, I guess, and they keep the trees and the cooling and the heating and the can they hook up to gas? Can they hook up to you know, there's a lot of questions around that. Um, okay, so open space and rec, you know, from the perspective of worries or concerns. I'll start this one. Uh, the addition of our, our fields. Um, they're, they're very shortly, there'll be turf fields will be before us. Um, there's a there's a project in the work works right now. But our our athletic facilities are in dire shape, and they have been for many years. And that's a, that's mostly on the high school. Um, and not turf. You mean not artificial turf? Artificial turf. Yes. Yeah. Is that, I'm, I'm not sure that's something we need to do, or is that something we should not be doing? What, 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 what concern? Well, yeah, um, it, it, there are two sides to every issue, uh, but it is impacting our schools. Mm -hmm. uh, it's impacting our, our youth as well, because we don't have the, the fields to play on. Uh, and the fields are, um, are, many of our fields are in very substandard. Um, and we also have to rent fields for our uh, competitions at the end of the season. Uh, my wife is the, the girl soccer coach, state champion girl soccer coach. Um, and their home games were at St. John's Prep. Um, they were at another home game this year. Uh, and again, a rented space, uh, Gordon, I believe. But it, it's coming. And it, it needs to be addressed. Yeah, some of the um, courts and stuff as well are in really poor condition over at, at Pingree, or at least they were. Um, and are, and we talking, tennis, are we talking what kind of courts are we talking? Tennis courts? Tennis courts, yeah. And um, and I know that, um, you know, to Patrick's point, I know that uh, turf has been um, talked about for several years now. And he's right. I mean, Linfield built a huge... Um, complex as part of their new middle school and a lot of I mean that's actually kind of a revenue opportunity for the town because a lot of um, clubs and things like that can rent it um, I just wanted to time out there uh, there's really no revenue opportunity with the turf um, unfortunately it, we won't have the time available to rent it it will go to our our, oh yeah, the, Patrick. Yeah, ours because it wasn't. I mean, we don't have a large enough. I, I don't think complex. But if it was planned appropriately, it, it could be a revenue opportunity. Yes. If it was planned outside of the high school. Yeah. It, it, yes, but that would be much more expensive as well to, to add that. Mm -hmm. But the, the turf project that that is coming, there's, there's there's no rental opportunity just because of the demands of our own children. As a is, is there a different option than turf? We have a grass field, but we can't water it and it's in abysmal so, condition. I and guess what I'm wondering, is there a different kind of thing you could use like clover or pearl seed, something like that, that would be longer lasting, stronger and wouldn't need watering? I think the rec departments, the one and the uh, schools are the ones that are really looking into that. So I don't know if that's actually under what we would have. To, I mean, I think as a community member, we all have been put to that process. Um, Phil, did you have something that you wanted to add to this or? 
Yeah, I'd like to direct it away from fields, which mm -hmm. we kind of spend a lot of time on in this town talking about when we're talking about open space um, to uh, other types of open space. And so I think one of the challenges is the town needs a priority list of properties that when they come on the market um, that could be purchased um, going forward. Um, so that's, that's one thing. Um, the second thing is, um, I think we also need to look at various open spaces and the, the ecosystem services they provide. So the protection of, of drinking of our drinking water, the flood storage they provide, wildlife habitat. We need to um, assess where those services are um, most valuable um, uh, within the town. Uh, there's no, there's been no uniform assessment of those ecosystem services of our open spaces currently. Mm -hmm. um, just a question on that. You did update your open space and recreation plan recently. So that I believe that some of that would be in there. Um, right, Laura. And we did go through a ranking of the chapter 61 properties, which are the ones that would be first right of refusal. Uh, but uh, Phil, what we don't have is really a mechanism to fund that. So we have some of them ranked and we even have some guidance for how the committees would be uh, engaged in evaluating that. But whether we are prepared to actually purchase some of those properties is another question. So my point is to go beyond the, just the chapter 61 properties sure. um, um, and, and rank all you know, possible open space parcels. Um, I agree with you, the challenge of funding any of that is a big one. Um, um, but I, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, while we're here, we, we should take the broad perspective if we can. Can I follow on to that? And this may not be a very popular thing to say, but I, I actually do, I think part of our trademark and why we all live here is the open space. But I also feel like open space is part of the reason that our track, and I'm not just about tax rates, believe me, nope. but I think we do need to balance the fiscal implications of buying up currently what is revenue generating land, albeit maybe minimal based on the chapter 61 stuff with actually putting it in conservation for in perpetuity. That said, I completely agree with you, Phil, about we do need to understand the ecosystem and all of the implications of not putting that into, into um, conservation. But the, also I'm just suggesting that there should be a balance and economics has to be part of that conversation in my thought. Yeah, we're still friends, Deb. Yeah, I think those are awesome points. Um, yeah, the, well, and here's my two cents on that. I think you're right that it's, it's totally right to acknowledge that there is a tension that exists between these two ideas of economic development and open space. But I also don't think they're mutually exclusive, right? And you can do, it, there are different ways to do that open space and have it. We were just talking about ecotourism and things like that. So they're, you know, maybe thinking creatively about how those things can be combined if it but of course there's some land that just is high value conservation land that should be not used for that but um i i like to get people thinking you know um creatively okay so are we ready to move on to public I facilities or is there any last thought oh last i, thought. Yeah. I, I don't okay. mean to rush you Kristen. yep um uh, in talking with my neighbors, they were particularly concerned about the lack of bike paths and sidewalks. Um, so how can we connect residents to open space and also shopping and, you know, things to do without using cars, um, which was very visible during the pandemic. Um, people were jogging by our house, which is on a pretty dangerous curve and there's no sidewalk and it, the roads are just not safe for walkers and bikes, which uh, we just had our car hit yesterday um, on one of the roads. Anyway, um, because the school system's regional, there are just so many more hopes to jump through for building school, school facilities that the town could also use. So that's a, such a long trajectory, um, but it, it's important for everyone to understand that. And then lack of a public indoor pool outside of Gordon College was a huge surprise to me. 
uh, when moving here. You know, we have a public pool in Hamilton, but it's outdoor only. And we have Pleasant Pond, but in the winter, you have to leave town if you want to go swimming. Mm -hmm. uh, and so does the swim team. I have one other comment on open space and it's about the forest and the trees. We, you know, the fells is burning, the other places are burning now. We don't, can't really expect to have a whole lot more water coming in the future, a lot more dryness. So I think we need to be mindful of where we gather people in a potentially fire concern area where there's houses and, you know, up butted, but, but, butted up against um, forests. I also have one um, last comment on, on open space and recreation. Um, I thought about making our open space, um, our trails, our parks more welcoming, um, even the bike path, better, better signage, um, parking, um, maybe a place to sit on a bench or a picnic table. Um, I think a lot of our, our parks and, and open space, we all value them so much, but they look a little bit like they could, um, they could use some improvements, I think. All right, so let's keep it moving. And then if there, cause we do have four more kind of things to talk about, um, but if there's anything else that pop up, of course, I'll, I'll throw it up there too. So for public services and facilities, I think my, my big uh, challenge is um, how do we move to the wireless environment when we don't have stable, rely, reliable wireless service across the whole community? So I'm, I'm uncomfortable giving up my landline until my wireless can work inside and outside in my house. Um, and by wireless, you're talking not cell wi phone? Or cell phone. phone, cell phone. Um, Phil? Did you have a comment? Uh, yep. So um, I think the town desperately needs um, a place to compost yard waste year round. Uh, Phil, it's called Brick End Farm. So I can drive there right now and drop off yard waste? No, they obviously have hours. But it's open for drop off is what I'm asking. Uh, from like uh, eight till like five o'clock in the day. So a resident can bring, I mean, that's good to know. Um, it should be more, I think, widely known throughout town because if you walk through any of the forests, there's plenty of yard waste being dumped in our in town open space. Um, Kirsten, and then I see Deb also has her hand up. Yep. So um, one thing I was wondering about is the possibility of townwide solar farm somewhere, um, like a municipal electric service. Uh, or, you know, our electric bill last month was $400, um, but we cannot put solar panels on our house. It just won't hold it because it's an old house. Um, building in sustainability into town buildings to reduce overhead costs. I know the library is putting on solar panels right now. Um, how can we do that with all of our buildings? So, you know, just those costs are only going up. Um, reducing the turnover of staff at Town Hall, I think would save us so much money. Um, it would help with regionalization of some positions and it would also help with us working with the state. I don't think we can tax our way out of our problems, particularly with um, Proposition two and a half limits that we're coming up on. So. We need to be working with our legislature and uh, the next governor on regulatory and possible legislation, legislative changes that could benefit a town like Wenham. I don't think we're lobbying for ourselves well right now. Do you have another comment? I know that Deb has her hand up, but there is something called community choice aggregation, which when um declined three years ago or five years ago when Hamilton did it, it basically gives the town anyone in the town the opportunity to choose solar. 
all solar or all wind or whatever they want to do. There's also um, solar farms. We just joined one about a year ago. So all of our incoming electricity is solar. Um, the Hamilton Wyndham Climate Action Team like posted something about that shortly. So there is hope if you can't put a solar on your, you can get it. Um, well, I just, uh, on that, I don't think I can put it on the ground. So I think there's some zoning things that we might want to look at. You know, I know someone who built a shed just to put a solar panel on it because they couldn't put it on their house. So that seems a bit extreme when, you know, I have a very sunny spot, but if I can't put it in the ground, it just becomes that much more expensive to build and maintain. And that would be a pretty simple zoning thing. I guess all I'm saying is that you, if, you can't, if you can't find a way to do it, which I can't either, we just have chosen a, a solar farm in New England mm -hmm. and are pulling it from there. Yeah. Okay, Deb. I have, I have two things. One is um, I am concerned about the duplication, the cost of duplication of services uh, between Hamilton and Wenham. I think it's a um, duplication is expensive and I think that's an issue. Um, I also am concerned about the underutilization of iron rail. I put it in the public facilities and services category because iron rail is um, a Wenham owned building. Rick? Can I, um, can I add on to Deb's thing and, and add maybe if she agrees an amendment uh, that we have the economic analyst advise us into whether putting two towns this size together with more services is financially viable long-term? Or should we be looking for a bigger partner to partner with? Or is it politically viable, Rick? Yeah, I'm not even worried about the politics. I'm worried about financially, if we invest in dual this, dual that, we'll be five, six, seven, eight years down the road be facing the same things because the scale of those two towns isn't large enough to be effective financially. Got it. Thank you. There, there was a study done, how long ago was that, that by the League of Women Voters? Could be 15 years ago on all of that. I think I did come across that the other day. Yeah, that's why I said, I think this has been talked about before. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah. Regionalizing services. Yeah. I'm, I recall correctly, I think they were concerned because the two fire chiefs or police chiefs at the time, time both town, neither town was willing to give either one up. So they, they ditched it. That was correct. That's the politics part, not the finance part, right? <laughs> yeah. But, but Hamilton and Wenham have been doing a lot of joint staffing mm -hmm. over the last few years. Um, I think the question is more, should we be doing that with Beverly or Manchester? You know, like or a Essex County model. Um, and that's something that, you know, we don't know. Merging the two towns, that might not be the right answer. It might be three towns, four towns. I mean, who knows? Or, mm -hmm. or keeping independent towns, but having a lot of shared services. And yeah, I think that's worth looking at. Although Thank there's you, certainly Kristen. a fear of being crushed as the tiny one, right? <laughs> All right. Ready to move any, oh, Rick, is your hand up still? We have one more comment, oh, okay. Just lingering up there. All right, just waving at me, I see. All right, so sustainability, natural resources, and energy concerns. We kind of started talking about that a little bit on the municipal side already and in housing um, and in open space, but is there anything more you want to add around this topic? Yes, there is a group I think that's been organized in Essex County, and how do we find out more about it, about regionalizing water? As we go forward, I'm not expert on this. I just, for the past 15 years, I've been concerned that um, the Ipswich isn't going to carry us all. Mm -hmm. And I think that's getting more play right now with this group. I don't know who they are. But. Well, definitely um, add solar development, which we just talked about. There's a lot of um, sort of there's a lot of discussion about solar development 
at um, the high school, middle school. And there's also, I know the town is looking at a, two, three sites that are potential for solar development. So on municipal facilities or on private facilities? Um, or or? Maybe someone from um, the Board of Selectmen can help me out here, but I know there's a couple of parcels they're looking at. Um, it's complicated because you have to have the uh, the electricity, the na natural national grid has to have the right stuff close enough. So if you find 10 parcels, you might be able to develop one or two. But um, there are some, there are definitely some, there are some movements, certainly towards a canopy at the high school. But I think solar development is, we're going to have to have to be producing our own electricity if we can in any way. Phil? Yeah, so there's um, a budgetary deficit to replant um, lost trees uh, on town properties. And um, thankfully, um, in part to Gary's leadership, um, where there's now a committee um, looking at this issue, but um, there's definitely a need um, for maintenance of at least town trees um, and uh, extensive replanting. Um, Laura, I would add also um, water quality. Um, they've been changing um, standards, I guess, for PFAS. Um, and that's still an evolving issue. So that's something we should have on our list as well. Thank you, Joanne. That is a concern. I also would add um, the possibility of expanding education along um, the lines of residential and and the town of what to plant, what kind of what kind of plants will will be sustainable through the summer we had. Um, I know the towns are both I both I think Wenham is definitely connected to greenscapes. They have a lot of good information on, um, you know, if you're planting your lawn, try something else besides regular grass. If you're planting bushes, try the ones that will survive. Um, and that's an education piece. Any concerns around invasive species or sort of native species, biodiversity, things like that? All of the above. Yeah, so the, the Hamilton Wenham Garden Club has made this a huge focus over the last few years, including having a conservation expo that was very popular um, a few years in a row. So there's a lot of local education and a lot of people are very interested in these topics too, because it's obviously it's on us. You know, if you, if you haven't moved in that direction towards native planting, you probably don't have much of a garden left at this point. It all sort of ties back to the the, the central communication, you know, knowing what's going on, what's out there, what resources we have. It's amazing what goes on in this town that no one ever hears about. All right, any last thoughts on natural resources, sustainability? Otherwise we'll move on to transportation. You're hanging in there pretty well. We have two more. Two more prop quizzes. All right, so we have, I already kind of put it in two places, but this concern around safety and also um, infrastructure for people who are not going around in a car or want to not go around in a car. But everybody gets mad about traffic, right? <laughs> Well, I, th I think that we should um, understand a little Rick, uh, understand a little bit better about uh, the planned upgrades to Main Street at Arbor and Monument, which really should help that bottleneck at at, at after school hours, um, and how that might help spur a little bit more development downtown, but should ease traffic. <clears throat> I had two things on my list, bike lanes, and um, we have a seat, council on aging van um, that could potentially be used by others who need it, you know, someone whose car is in the shop or, or you know, 
just wants to get to the commuter rail in the morning and doesn't want to, you know, could actually have one car instead of two cars at their home. Um, you know, that's that's something that's a possibility. Or teenagers who need to get somewhere after school and don't have a parent at home to do that. Be nice to make it electric. Definitely. So what was that about electric? Or was that something about electric vehicles? Electric, well, electric buses for sure. The school's electric, electric you know. Okay. Electric charging stations will hopefully become important as we move towards electric vehicles rapidly. Right. Anything else about your roadways, your traffic, your safety, your bikes, pads, trucks, connectivity? I throw sidewalks back in there because not everywhere has a sidewalk and many of the sidewalks aren't particularly accessible if you're in a wheelchair. I think also we need to look at um, providing parking um, so that the, the shops and um, services have convenient parking available. In, in some places, we don't have that now. Are you thinking mainly of the town center area? Yeah. Okay. Are there any other locations in town where parking is a concern, like a public municipal facility or anything? That seems like that's pretty good yeah maybe maybe just leave it at that for now at the at the town center okay we, we could have one yeah one area that goes really un, underutilized and it's because of no parking is are the swamp trails at the end of 97 on the Wenham Topsfield border yeah. uh, that's another place where parking could be uh increased a uh, uh, great not greatly but could be increased to allow more people to uh partake there and you know and even if even if we want to get really insular and you know make it resident parking only we haven't even talked about that to give residents priority on parking spots around Pleasant Pond around that spot in other areas in town um, I, I think Autobahn is going to be doing a good job at upgrading their Cedar Pond with more parking there to, and, and, a, and a rampway for um, handicapped or, or, or um, people who need special access to walk through the trails. So we should look at that as maybe as an example of what could be done in other places in Wenham. All right, one more. Uh, unless there's anything else on transportation. Oh, one last thing, which is um, it sucks that you can't park overnight at the MBTA. So if you want to go into Boston for an overnight, you cannot leave your car at the Hamilton Wenham station. You have to go to Beverly to do that. Um, it seems like kind of dumb to me, actually. But I don't know that there's any overnight parking. Kirsten, did I, my, I inadvertently left my car overnight there. Um, is there, <laughs> what do they do if you leave it overnight? Because nothing happened to my car. I think you get a fine. Um, I think it's supposedly around like snow plowing, but oh. you know, obviously most of the year that's just not an issue. And it, it would be nice to be able to go in, leave the car for the weekend and come back. But yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I just paid the fee the following day on the on the app and I didn't have any issues. So maybe you kind of can, it's just not clear. I mean, you could get towed, I guess. That's the, probably the worst. Thing. Oh, did you have another comment on this? Yeah, I'm glad someone brought up snow plowing. And this may be more appropriate under public services, but it, I thought of it under transportation. But I remember last winter, there was a significant lack of um, snow plow operators in town. And that becomes a transportation issue, obviously.
Um, one other thing to add is rideshare bikes and um, cars. I forget what the car company is called, where you can you know have a you can borrow a car for an hour or two. Mm -hmm. um, zip car. Zip car. Yeah. Um, and those rideshare bikes, if we had bike lanes, would be amazing um, for access to a bunch of places. You know, for example, if someone wants to take the train and then go to the Wenham Museum, they could use a, one of those bikes. All right, should we move on to land use? Um, and then we can wrap up this portion of the program. So by land use, mainly, you know, we can think about what's actually on the ground, um, or we could think about zoning everyone's favorite topic to keep us awake. But um, now I'm talking a lot, but I have a lot of notes on this. <laughs> Just Good. Through it. Okay. Um, I think we all need to better understand zoning. Like what revenue would we get if there were a zoning change for a property? How much would it be for different types of zoning? What land is out there? How can we work with owners proactively so we aren't reacting when a property is up for sale and then we lose it or we freak out about it. You know, we don't have a plan for that property. And then uh, it's just stressful, I think, for everyone. So being more proactive, obviously having more conservation areas to protect the watershed and build in low water plantings and sustainability into all development, um, which is starting to happen in some places. Um, although in Wenham, I just drove by some new housing. We're in a water band. They had the water, you know, irrigating their, their lawn. So I don't know what's going on there. Um, and then also that larger lots can be socially isolating. So we need to balance um, strong community building things. To, like we lived here for a year before we met anyone except our next door neighbor. And I realized, okay, I have to go join things in order to meet someone, but it should be easier than that. Kristen, yeah. when, I see, when I see someone watering, I just email Eric at the water department and he just puts a note in their mailbox. I feel yeah, kind of bad about it, but not that bad. Margaret. Yeah, hi. Um, one of the, I think, important things that you we need to consider is that MBTA communities piece um, as far as land use goes. That's going to impact a, a large amount of the area of uh, Wenham. Um, and also, I do want to let everyone know that we, we have started up a regulation review based on climate adaptation. So that's kind of the big thing that's happening with the state. The state's pushing that that regulations should, um, you know, take into consideration climate change. Um, and I think most people understand 97% of Wenham is zoned residential. The only area that's not residential in Wenham is the business district, which is a small portion of that downtown area. And then um, the property just as you get to the end uh, on 1A, there's a small a, a smaller piece there, but the rest of the community is entirely zoned for only residential use. So those things are things that the community will need to think of if you want to do some kind of um, economic development. If you want to do any commercial development, you're going to have to rezone different areas because um, you just don't have the capacity to do it right now. But again, that MBTA communities thing is. We're working on it and we are going to be meeting with attorneys, uh, the attorney next week and mass housing is putting out a lot of technical assistance. So all the communities around are talking about it, but that's just my thing. Thank you. Okay, um, Marty. Thank you. <clears throat> I think that um, as we talk about development, 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 zoning becomes more and more critical because it seems to me that that is gonna be one of the better avenues to keep Wenham Wenham for a lot of us. Um, I'm thinking about noise restrictions. 
um, whether they be from building, whether they be from neighbors, whether they be from roosters, dogs, whatever. I think that, um, I also think lighting, how much lighting there can be <clears throat> at what hours of the day. Because I think, you know, a lot of us moved to Wenham years ago because we liked what Wenham was. It was quiet, it was family oriented. And I just, I just think that zoning may be the way to, the best way to keep a semblance of that for those of us who moved to Wenham for that. Great. Um, are there any other comments? Okay, Laura. Oh, you might be muted. There you go. Yep, there. Sorry, it took me a second to find where my controls went. All right. So thank you for all of your input. I know that was got uh, the longer portion of the program, but that's really helpful to, um, for us in um, helping us kind of fill out um, existing conditions, but also think toward where some of the formative, so-called like formative issues are, where those um, that are going to impact your future vision and um, goals and things moving forward and helping us as we set up for the community forum. So thank you for all your feedback. Laura, There, I have one comment. Um, mm -hmm. The interviewers came up with a concern of centralized communication. I think mm -hmm. that's extremely important, but I had no idea in the categories under the comprehensive planning activity where to put it. Mm -hmm. So I put it, um, I made a note of it in municipal services and facilities. Um, it doesn't just have to live there, but that, you know. See, I don't have anything that says municipal services in the instructions that we were given for this. Oh, group. interesting. Okay. <clears throat> but I think that centralized communication is extremely important. Is it public facilities and services? Is that what you yes, mean? Yes, public service, public services. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So that, yeah. So we did take note of that. That does seem to be a theme. Um, okay. So I think we're ready for Margaret to give us a little update on any uh, plan names that were suggested and uh, photos, photos that have been submitted. Um, we really only had a couple of name um, suggestions. Um, when I think Phil, you had sent one, and I think we also, um, Kirsten sent some ideas about maybe using the idea of stone walls and building into the future, um, some, some ideas like that, but there was really no concrete, you know, here's what we should name it, other than um, Phil, you, uh, I'm going to pull that up. I don't remember what I said. You remember what you said? I think it was when I'm forward. Um, move when I'm moving, moving when I'm forward together. I don't know. Did they steal a Peter Clayism? Yeah, together. that sounds really good. Phil. I think that was one. I think that was the idea. One of them was similar to Peter's um, <laughs> Peter's campaign slogans. Um, so I don't know if anyone here has any thoughts that they haven't sent in to me, or I think Deidre has her hand up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, we have, well, I don't know who started, but anyway, there is a Facebook page for Wenham that's called Wonderful World of Wenham. So what about something as simple as imagine a more wonderful Wenham or imagine an even more wonderful Wenham? That was my two cents. I like that. Yeah. Or like imagine, imagine Wenham 2035 or whatever it is. Well, the, the wonderful Wenham is it's like semi-branded it for, for a number of people, I think. So that's why I'm using the one, um, one it's right now, it's Wonderful World of Wenham on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So there's already some degree of connection to it. Of course, not everyone's on Facebook, but it does have some recognition. So how many people have actually um, go to that site? Because I go every day. 
just raise your hand if you if you do it. Who uh, who broke that? The last thing you can see that. There are 492 people on that group. Maybe continue to think about it and um, send in some more ideas. Um, right. do, you, do you feel that we need to have an idea now so that we can start to, um, you know, get this brand out there during the process? Or do you just think it needs to be a name for the final product, Laura? Um, I mean, it can really happen. I, I mean, ideally, you know, we would be able to have it and kind of start to use it in the promotion materials for the community forum. But I'm also thinking, you know, that could even be kind of an icebreaker activity at the community forum, too. You know, we could ask people who attend that for naming ideas and maybe that's something that comes out of it. Okay. All right. I'll keep sending to you whatever I get as they come in. Yeah, we could have some idea, like idea prompts or maybe a short list. I mean, maybe we could have a, you know, a little voting activity or something of the ideas that we have so far that are sort of pre-vetted by the committee. And then if they have any additional ideas too, they can put a little um, like sticky note on there and people can vote on the new ideas too. But okay. we can, yeah, maybe that's it. So we'll come up with a like a, sh a short list and at our next meeting that we'll have to schedule in September. Um, okay. That's an uh, activity idea, yeah. Um, we did get, we got a number of photographs and I have to thank Catherine Tinsley for most of them. Catherine, the next day sent us a lot of photos that she's taken through the years and some of them are wonderful. Um, and I did get uh, a few others. I've put them all in the Dropbox, Laura. I think you've seen them. Mm -hmm. oh. okay. okay, great. So we will continue to look for more photo photos to, um, I'm sure it'll be great to have them for all of our public forums and other materials. Yeah, and if there's ways to reshare, um, you know, this information, I'll kind of boost it again or put it out again, um, you might get a few more responses. Okay. One comment about photos, there may be some use, not obviously at the front part of what we're doing, but some older older pictures to kind of show the se sequencing of when I'm on that main street. I mean, if there are some great photos in the Wenham Museum's archives, I believe, of the old photos. And then you could sort of press past the horse and buggy to, you know, whenever and then current, just, just to show evolution, mm -hmm. um, which is sort of what we're trying to get people to think about. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. I did see, um... Some of those historic photos, we grabbed at least one, but we should probably grab more um, and ask, sort of ask the museum for their blessing to use them. But um, one of the, that I didn't even realize I'm getting off track and then I'll get back. But you, Wenham had a trolley, like an actual streetcar at one time. And I had no idea. I thought that was so fascinating. So anyway, yeah. ah, we're on, I'm losing my track of my slides. Okay, there we go. Um, so I know our time is, 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 is getting short. So I wanna kind of move this along. So right now, stay tuned though, because there's some late breaking news that the library meeting room isn't available. But right, right now we're planning on Thursday, October 6th from 6 to 8 p.m. Location to be determined yeah. um, it, uh, for a community forum, kind of open house style. So people can come and go anytime in between those, that time frame that's convenient for them with two brief kind of kickoff presentations, um, one at 6.30 and one at 7.30, so people can kind of catch one of them uh, when they come and people will circulate to different stations and the stations will be themed according to kind of the different topics so people can 
pop around to all of them or just what they're most interested in. Um, we usually have maybe a couple of different more icebreaker type decision uh, or questions or something too. Um, it'll be staffed by, you know, at least three people from our office, but then we'll, we'll ask that there's some, uh, we hope of course all of you will come, but also that, you know, we'll want a few of you to um, also help us facilitate at different um, activities at different stations would be really helpful. Um, and just having informative and interactive information. So a board with some of the data, you know, that we've learned are interesting, mo the most compelling data, uh, maps, very graphic visual things for people to look at, and then some key kind of questions or activity to discuss at the uh, at the station. And we can get into some more ideas with you at the next um, meeting. Um, but we really want to know what issues and opportunities that they're seeing in each element, not that dissimilar from what we conversation we had tonight, um, any of the biggest issues that they hope the plan will address and kind of their overall vision for what when and will be um, or what they want it to be in at its best. What does it look like at its best in 10 years? Um, and on that note, um, so I have some homework for you all, um, which is once we do actually confirm the location, we really need your help to get the word out um, on early. So we we have a bunch of outreach strategies, kind of a community checklist. Um, and we talked about some of them already, but really sending this information out to every chair of every kind of board of committee, asking the board of committees to share it at their next meeting. Um, you all who sit on different boards of committees to share with the public and at with your other committee members, and then any kind of tabling activities that might be coming up any other community events, um, posting the flyers at, you know, um, different, um, like the library or any other central kind of community locations, and um, connecting with the Wenham Museum as an idea, um, and any activities they might have going on there, uh, the community house, even though it's in Hamilton, but you know, if they have activities or something there, uh, even posting at different trail heads or conservation areas, kiosks um, is, an, is an idea. Um, the far, you know, farms really. So uh, Gordon College is another idea and any public facilities. So we, anyway, we have a whole long list of ideas and we're open to your other ideas, of course, the schools and, and, um, and other municipal buildings and newsletters and e-blasts and things that groups that people have. I know you have an electronic signboard that maybe could be used to. So um, what I would really like is for us to kind of go around and people to maybe speak to their own ideas and what what you are, will do for helping to get the word out about the um, Plan. And right now, we're, I mean, we say comprehensive plan, but we could also say master plan if that's what um, folks would prefer. Uh, Kirsten has her hand raised, Laura. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a children's business fair at the Wenham Museum on September 24th from 11 to 4. Um, we, we've been invited to participate if we want to, and we could do some exercises with kids there. I think there gonna be a ton of families. It might be a good way to get uh, younger parents and kids and, and particularly do an exercise for children, I think would be you know, something I've mentioned here that to make sure that we get the next generation who's gonna be here in 40 years, hopefully. Um, yeah, and actually we usually do a kids activity at the community forum too, um, to kind of have a kids table. Um, and some of what we've done too is sort of, um, you know, draw, you know, you draw like your favorite place in Wenham or draw uh, for older kids sort of um, write or draw something about Wenham that you want improved and what does it look like after it's improved or something like that. So we can definitely come up with with an activity uh, and duplicate it at the community forum too. So there's something to kind of keep kids busy while their parents are going around. Um, mm -hmm. And maybe something for kind of little, like the more littles, maybe it's just kind of draw something that 
you like or would want to see in one of them for the older kids, you can get a little bit more um, detailed about improvement ideas or vision or something. Yeah. So who are you thinking is going to do all the outreach? Just because well, I've done this, this is for a lot of committees and, you know, yes, it's yes. a lot of work. So that, so. <laughs> that is, you know, this is a little bit cart before the horse because we do do what we call a meeting in a box activity. Um, we haven't put those together for Wenham yet because that's really more of a tabling thing we do in phase two. So after the conclusion of something we would put together in October and get out to you. Um, I mean, I think this this event is certainly something where we can help get the word out about the forum. Um, it's something that's close enough to the forum where we would probably have some sort of idea for a kids activity, but it's not it's like if it's, these are the sort of things that if it's an event that a committee member, board a committee member, like even yourself, if you were planning to go to something already, it's already in your calendar, it's an opportunity for you to, you know, hand out the flyer or even help facilitate, you know, the activity or something. But yeah. I think it's more about getting the word out about the forum at this point. But yes, I think um, ideas when we get into phase two about piggybacking on community events for more community engagement activities in phase two is, is great. Yeah. So the first thing that comes to mind for me is that election day is coming up on September 6th. So there is an area in town hall right where you go in to vote that has flyers and that would be a really, really good place to um, to get that word out. Yep, perfect. To people who care a lot. Um, There's the fall festival happening in town on the 18th of September in the downtown area. So that's also a good place. So I, I, I love all the brainstorming, but I also want to go around and like, I would feel much better if each of you would tell, like if you would tell the group what you are gonna, well, I mean, once we give you the materials, obviously, but once you get the materials, what are you going to be doing to um, help get the word out? Laura, Peter Clay has his hand up. Yes. Um, I'm gonna go to sporting events, high school sport events, just stand out there soccer, football, field hockey, um, volleyball, and just stand there. Sorry, Peter, did you say you were you were gonna attend those and? No, I'll just go to them. What was and, that? Uh, I'm a big generals fan. Oh um, yeah. I would go to the, <clears throat> to the games. Mm -hmm. A lot of people go. Yeah, that's great. Marty, I see your hand up. Uh, I will be more than happy to have flyers available at the um, September meeting at the Hamilton Wenham Garden Club. If someone can get me flyers prior mm -hmm. to the third Wednesday of September. Okay. How, how will we get the flyers? Will they just come to us in an email and we'll print them? Um, yes, I will send them out in an email um, I'm sure, you know, um, Margaret could probably print some at Town Hall and you can come and pick them up. Um, or if it's more convenient for you to, and you want to print on your home computer, you're certainly welcome to do that. But, you know, we can also, you know, sorry, put it on the town's dime and have Margaret print up some to put around. Um, yeah, we would, we would probably have to have those printed. And I mean, we can do that. I think it's part of the budget to have some things printed. We can go to Staples. I can print out a certain stack of them depending on what you think, Laura or Joanne, would, whatever you think might be a good number. And then we can, I can distribute them or people can come pick them up. Okay, good. Margaret, I would go black and white. I think it has as much appeal. Uh, as, as a marketing guy, I would say you want to just get the message out. You can also do um, postcards. Something yeah, smaller. So maybe thought. some postcards. If you're going to print them. Well, okay. Well, I can put up um, flyers at um, the tea house, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> the uh, community garden, and the library. Um, who can send out a blast 
message for with a save the date. Who would that come from? You mean from the town? Yeah, who would have the email addresses set up to send that? <clears throat> Um, it might might be the town administrator's office. Okay. I can look into that, Joanne. Okay. I think Phil has his hand up. Yeah, so we have uh, two Conservation Commission meetings in September, which we certainly can mention this at. Uh, we can get the CONCOM committee members to uh, distribute to their family, friends, and neighbors. And I... We'll do that uh, for mine as well. And I'm, I'm wondering if, you know, the town had that, um, has the universal call system um, to relay inf emergency information to residents. I'm wondering if that could be utilized as well for this. I'm not sure that they let us use that for just general information. Gary may know better being on the select board. Is there any kind of RSVP that's happening? Well, that's um, sometimes we are, have RSVPs and sometimes we don't. Um, I wasn't proposing one for this one, trying to keep it kind of open, you know, open house style. Um, but we set that up before for other master plans. I definitely found it helps remind people, if, you know, if they're using Eventbrite or something and then you know it's optional but you get a better sense of headcount and then also people are like oh that's that thing i signed up for and there's like 10 reminders because i signed up for it <laughs> so that helps um i can do the um monthly meeting of the one of democrats i'm happy to post on the three facebook pages that are there's two for hamilton when i'm and one for just when i'm um that's it my group yeah, that's so, a great so and covered them. Just make RSVP optional. Yeah. yeah. Um, there was someone in the chat, James's iPad, suggests that the COA has a publication, the Wenamite, that we could put in. Um, we'll put one of the flyers in there. Good idea. I'll check with Jim Reynolds as um, soon as I can and see when that goes out next. Um, Jay Burnham also has an email list of events, like meetings in town, so I can. I could reach out to him to see if he'll do something a little bit more. I can include a graphic. Great. And Margaret, we could we could bring it up in the zoning board meeting on September. And so we have one in September at some point. I forget the date. Yeah, we do. Yeah, I'll put it on the agenda, Dana. Thanks. The E and Wenamite with the COA is published weekly. They also have, uh, that's by email. They also have a snail mail publication that goes out monthly and we could put flyers at the COA. I could I announce it at First Church and uh, get it in that bulletin that reaches a few hundred people. I don't know if they're all in Wenham, but we could get it in there, I'm sure. I'll bring some flyers to the fall festival in uh, downtown Hamilton when I'm. Oh, I can also do the Hamilton when I'm human rights coalition um, group page. And there's an email list as well. Laura, that sounds like a lot of ideas. Yeah, that's yeah, great. Definitely. I love that everyone's volunteering for things. Um, and there's, you know, there's a checklist and punch list. I think that um, Margaret's going to have, you know, some, some almost like a telephone tree, an email tree, right, where you can send it off to different department heads and boards and committees and the town administrator's office can help get the word out on the town website and the kind of usual channels. Um, the library sometimes has their own list. I know you mentioned COA has their own list. The schools have, kind of have their own list. Um, parent teacher uh, groups um, might have their own Facebook pages of their own lists, um, that kind of stuff. Um, I, this is Deb. I can do the school uh, and, and or friends organizations, which is the PTO. That's what we call that in town. So I can liaise yep. to that. Perfect, thank you. Um, I could forward to the Mother's Club. I'm not in it, but 
I know people who are in there. Um, and also the League of Women Voters. I'm not sure somebody else wants to take that on. Mm -hmm. Great, that sounds like everyone's given their, their input there. Will you make one of the graphics, the saved the date graphics, uh, share kind of make a PDF of it and, sh and send it to the committee so we can share it on our own social media? Yes, definitely. So I'll have some of this that'll be like a social media friendly image, and then there'll be more of a flyer version. Um, and then if you'd like, I can also draft um, a uh, like a what's it called press release essentially language, and you can borrow from that or share that with any um, you know local wicked local or whatever um, you have for your local um, news resources. Um, or it's still language that people might be able to borrow and use in their own newsletters and things like that. So. I do think maybe it should be one of master plan versus comprehensive plans. I just don't know if that'll be confusing using two different names. Yeah, that's fine. I know that the committee's named the master plan. It was something we've kind of batted around both ways, um, which actually brings me, I'm almost done with my portion of the slide. I know we're getting pretty close to 8.30 here. Um, so this is the couple more logo options. Um, what we heard before was that you wanted something more specific to Wenham. So here's the, someone suggested taking the town hall image, making a black and white, and then having kind of a navy box where it's when I'm, and then we have it both ways, right? When I'm master plan and versus when I'm comprehensive plan. So either way, um, this one's more of a map kind of of when I'm, and then this one's just the typographic kind of version of it. So when a master plan and then a tagline, like whatever that is, moving forward together or imagine wonderful when I'm, or, you know, whatever we um, come up with for, a name or a tagline, or maybe the name could go at the top and a tagline underneath. So um, any feedback on any of these? Um, Laura, I really like the, the Wenham um, Town Hall image. Um, I wonder if it could be combined with the other um, typographical logo in, instead of the blue box at the bottom, or some, you know, in some way mm -hmm. incorporate that. And then when we get that tagline, we can just pop Yes, it. and then you can lay it out both ways. You can kind of do a top um, and then a land, like a landscape and a portrait version. So you can use it um, oh, yeah. in different formats. Mm -hmm. Draw my pen. Um, yeah. Laura, can this be voted on too with the community forum? Like if you have a few um, different ideas as like the name will be voted on? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I if there's one that, I mean, them. it's entirely up to you. If you, if there's one that you're really drawn to, we can just do it and that'll be the logo. If you want the community to have some feedback on it, we can do that too. Yeah. Joanne, I don't know what you think of that, but it's, it's up to you. Um, I'm sorry. I missed, I guess, what the choices were. No, I was just saying uh, for the logo, does this committee want to vote on a logo? tonight or do you want to have a few different logos put together and vote at the community forum the same way you're going to vote on the name at the community forum well i guess we could do it at the community forum what what do others think i like that i just want to say i'm not partial to the circular one because that map looks like an arm yeah. <laughs> Yeah, punch an arm or a, a whale. <laughs> That's yeah. also good feedback. Um, if there's any that are like definitely out, okay. I, We're I a funny looking town. <laughs> uh, what if we just called it the Wenham plan and then had the dates that the plan is supposed to cover, like 2022 to 2032 or something like that? Just like the plan. Um, I kind of like that, that the term, the word master is starting to get negative connotations in, in general. Um, 
So I, I could see something like just the Wenham plan. Yeah, and just as we call it, the Wenham plan. It's the Wenham plan, the Wenham plan. And that might make it easily consumable and recognizable and easily remembered. Maybe it could be the Wenham 2035 plan or whatever the year is going to be. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. That, I, I had a hard time hearing her for some reason. Can someone repeat that? Um, oh, I don't know if it was me that you didn't hear or Joanne. Uh, but... Oh, Joanne. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I wonder if it could say the Wenham 2035 plan. Yeah, uh, or the Wenham plan 20, or imagine Wenham 2035, or, you know, or, like, or, around with it. or maybe it's more like a word like roadmap or, mm -hmm. you know, traveling, traveling the next 10 years together or something. I don't know. There's, I mean, I, I like the idea of plan is fine, but there's something about an action, more visually, more mentally, visually action, like traveling, like where we're going. Which could be in a tagline too. So yep. what are the years that it's gonna cover? 40 well, years, the way we're going. <laughs> like the years. last one was 50 years so yeah. hey <laughs> we don't yeah we don't have to repeat that um but the 20 let's see it's going to be finished 2030 2024 i think maybe 2023 did i get that i'm trying i'll have to check so yeah, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't just say the end date because then people think, oh, that's like way into the future. It's like, it's gotta be like, this is a plan for now. And yeah, that we're working on for- Or at least a range. Or like the 10 year plan or something like that. Mm -hmm. When I'm planned, to, yeah. For the when I'm roadmap 2023, traveling next. Yeah, okay. We can play around with some different options and um, make sure though all you know all of those are written down and we can have that as an icebreaker mm -hmm. um, at the forum along with some of the different logo options. Peter, I see your hand up. And yeah, yeah, I was just thinking of uh, what you put under when a master plan that lower version. Mm -hmm. You know, Wenham's future is now. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Throw it out there. Deb, did you have something that, to add? Is that better, Phil? Yeah, I think um, I think there's two things we're trying to do, right? We're doing the naming piece, but we're also combining that with the visual piece that's gonna that the logo is gonna include whatever that naming piece is but I think from an aesthetic standpoint does anybody want to eliminate one any of the three that are there just so we can narrow it down a little bit and make some progress or I like Joe I think it was Joanne's idea to combine both for a vertical and horizontal logo the far right and the far left one with the town hall I agree with that I would I would I would lose the middle one I agree, and I also think the light, the dark, the navy, I think it was my idea too, which is why I'm not a graphic designer, um, but the navy with the white Wenham on it, I don't think that's right. So I think, com as Joanne said, combining, take that navy blue block off and somehow combine the other two, aesthetically, I think would be pleasing. Um, Deb, did you have a comment? I'm set. I'm going to take my hand down now. Oh. <laughs> and Peter, did you have anything else to add or are you just waiting? I did. Okay. I think the Wenham sign on the left, it should be what's right on our website. Because that's, that's who we are. Um, and you don't need to say, master plan or comprehensive plan underneath Wenham. It should be the town of Wenham. This is who we are, right? And then take your pick. I, I would go with the, the lower one. 
with the uh, Wana master plan with that beautiful picture of the town. And I already gave you my idea for a uh, slogan. I think if you take the blue box away, as Deb said, and just put that open when a master plan, whatever underneath, it won't look quite so boxy. Maybe we, you know, maybe it's a little bigger than the bottom, but whatever. And then a nice little green tree. But I think, does everyone agree we should not continue to look at the middle one, but marry those two? Yeah. Each end. Okay, so we're there. Well, uh, the only thing about the middle one is one of the, you know, someone brought up in the beginning of this, no one knows where Wenham is. <laughs> and I think that's a pretty important point. Now, I'm not advocating for necessarily for that logo, but I think we shouldn't lose track of that, that, um, um, you know, knowing exactly where we fit into the larger landscape is is kind of important in the master planning exercise. We'd have to fill in a few towns around that because from that image, if you don't know Wenham, you're not gonna have no, any idea what that is. I, right? I, yeah. I, I wouldn't advocate for that particular image, um, right. but the concept of a map um, with Wenham in a landscape is not a bad one necessarily. Right, right, right. And also, I think if you ask some people in town, and maybe not a majority, but they might say they like the fact that no one knows where it is uh, because it is unfound and it is still this little oasis in, uh, in an otherwise pretty heavily uh, inhabited area. But I don't feel that way, but some people might. All right, so I think I'm gonna move forward with what you said, I don't think I would necessarily include just to narrow things down for the audience at the forum too. Um, it sounds like we wouldn't include the middle one, but we can play around with some different options for the town hall and the, um, the typographical one and combining them. And um, we really are talking about three things, sort of a naming piece, a logo, and possibly a tagline. So we can have kind of different iterations of those three things and have people kind of vote on ones we've listed and come up with their own ideas. Um, ah! All right, last slide. Okay, there we go, we made it. Great. This concludes the portion of my section of the agenda. So thank you for being with me. I know that guy, we're getting a little late. Um, Laura, thank you, that was great. and. Um, I think we had such great input. It it really um, got so many great ideas and lots and lots of stickies. Um, so the next thing on the agenda is the um, update on the Gordon College land sale. And Margaret was gonna give us an update on that. Yeah, thank you. Um, some of you may have already heard some rumors or maybe factual information. Gordon College um, had, did put out a press, press release that they're intending to sell 75 acres of their property off of Grapevine Road to a company called Pulte Homes. Um, Pulte Homes is, they have met with members of the um, staff, the town administrator's office and select board members. They're, they, well, they want to build 377 units of housing for 55 and over community. Um, the, it's in very preliminary stages. They have given us a, um, a, a diagram of the, um, the project. I'm gonna see if I can bring it up in one second. Uh, yeah, here it is. So let me see if I can make this a little bigger. Not sure if you can all see that. Can you see it all right? Yeah, we yeah. can. Okay. So what they're proposing is, this is Grapevine Road here. So they're showing a street going in here with these are, and again, very preliminary. These are um, four story garden style buildings with one and two bedroom units in them. Over here are townhouse units with 
most likely three bedroom unit, uh, three bedrooms in each unit. Um, they're talking about them being condos and not being rental, um, 55 and over. So whatever impact that might have, uh, you know, I'm not sure. But they have not submitted anything formally to the planning board. They're proposing bringing this in under what's called our um, independent living overlay district zoning. That's the type of zoning um, that would allow for higher density, a density like this. There's a lot of um, criteria that would have to be met. The planning board would be issuing it. It's a special permit. It's not by right. Um, there's, it's not a 40B. Um, it's, it's not, um, it's a private development. There's no affordability component to it of any great extent. They are saying that they would um, create 10% of them as affordable. That would keep our subsidized housing numbers balanced. Um, so that's really all we know right now. Um, they are meeting with some staff and some other board uh, chairs uh, later this month. Um, and that's really all we know. Gordon College wants to sell the property. They need the money. Um, Pulte Homes thinks this is a, an area that could use this kind of development, uh, but it's, it remains to be seen. But I do want this committee to know about it because it, it's going to impact this community in, in different ways. It certainly will increase the number of housing units that we have. These housing units would not count for the MBTA community's um, requirements. Uh, they're, they're age restricted. There's no age restriction allowed for the MBTA community's um, overlay district that will be created. So um, yeah, this is it. And again, it's out, it's out there. People know about it. Gordon College is talking about it. Pulte Holmes is talking about it. Um, there are a lot of questions still have to be answered. They have not formally applied to the planning board at all. This is all we have at this point. So I don't know if anyone has questions. Margaret, what's the footprint of this proposed development? And when you say footprint, Phil, what do you mean? I mean, how much area are they disturbing? Well, it's a, this parcel that you see is a 75 acre parcel. So I really, I don't have the calculations as to how much area this is. You can see where they show these blue areas of wetlands. These have not been delineated. We don't know for sure whether that's where the wetlands lie right now. Um, but I would say it's probably, what, 35, 40 acres at least of clearing. What's the overall size of the property that Gordon owns? How much land does Gordon own altogether? Yeah. I'm sorry, Kirsten, I don't know that off the top of my head. Just trying to get a sense of how much of their property are they talking about doing? It's approximately 475 acres. They have 475. Okay, thanks, Gary. So and does Gordon what, does oh sorry, go ahead, Kirsten. What is in there right now? Right now here in this site? In this space, yeah. This is just woods. Okay. Nothing's been cleared. The only thing, gotcha. um, the Gordon College Woodland parking lot is there down at the bottom. That's there currently, you can see that. So does Gordon pay taxes now? No. And so would that then be retroactively taxed as a? Uh, no, I don't know. I don't know if it's retroactively. Pulte Homes is throwing numbers out at us saying two to $3 million in taxes possibly per year for a project like this. But so, so we, so we didn't get, we didn't get taxes from Gordon for all these years, from Gordon College for all these years, and then they can sell it. And that's just that. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the land, once it's developed, it's taxed based on its new development. It right. would be transferred, the ownership would be transferred to a private owner. Right. So. Has there been any discussion of what the units are going to sell for? No, not really, Marty. They've um, 
you know, they've thrown out some numbers, but we don't know for sure. I, I think it's whatever the market will bear at the time. I wonder who their uh, target audience is. Well, they're saying 55 and over. Mm, so, and that today, and, and it only means one owner has to be 55. They don't all, you know, you can have children in this development. Um, so they would, you know, I, I don't know who the target is. <laughs> it depends on the units too. The one bedroom might be, you know, older single people, um, two bedrooms and then three bedrooms, possibly grandparents who are caring for their children or, you know, a, a, a mother and a child who's older, different, there's all the different kinds of families now. Are they looking at adding any kind of retail in there? I mean, it seems crazy to have like not even a, like yeah. no a shop, promotion. no, no a little and, like grocery yeah. store or like, you know, corner store yeah. or something so that, cause they now would have to go somewhere else. Yeah, for sure. To do anything. Yeah, there is nothing proposed like that. Um, and, and currently we have no um, zoning that would allow for that. Peter, did you have a question? No, I just wanted to say that um, the town in Boulder Lane, um, we own property right there on um, on the road, and we could put a convenience store there if we wanted to. It wouldn't be that easy to put a convenience store on Boulder Lane. No, 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 no. So, um, yeah. Margaret, not on Boulder Lane, but um, what is the street there that cuts over? before Boulder Lane. Oh, Hull Street? Yeah, Hull so Street? we actually own, the town owns the land between Boulder Lane and Hull Street, right there on Grapevine. We, we don't, Peter. We, um, that's owned by the Brady family, the land that's mm. next to um, Boulder. But there, there is some town-owned land back there for sure. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. We'll accessing it is a little difficult but yeah you, you and i have it, been nightmares about boulder lane we do it, it's hard that. to imagine the impact on grapevine road yeah um, any, and any um any application would have to include a traffic study they would have to you know a traffic study would have to be done that would include the implications to traffic on grapevine and into 128 yeah, it's right there near 128. Mm -hmm. Would there I mean, be any kind of a study of water? Do they draw? I'm assuming they draw from the Ipswich watershed. You know, Marty, we don't know right now where they're going to get their water. Gordon College gets their water from Salem Beverly Water Board. They have right. water and sewer rights. <clears throat> um, we don't know whether this development would be able to tie into that or not. Um, and they're definitely, you know, we've, they'll be talking to the water department. Because Beverly and Salem draw from the Ipswich watershed. Uh, Salem Beverly is Wenham Lake. They own Wenham Lake, right? Yes, but the water all comes from the same place, which yeah. is the Ipswich River. Yeah. So I'm not a planner, although I'm the daughter of one. Um, I mean, you know, I think about a place like Brooksby Village, where my mother in law lives. and. They have on-site restaurants and a gym and a pool and little shops and a post office space and community space and community gardens and medical offices. And it means yep. she doesn't really have to go anywhere. Right. That's not to what they do services. Doing. Is yep. that something that we could do for really large developments like this to well, cut down know, on it's driving not something, time? Yeah, it's not something the town can do. Kirsten, it's something that a developer might try to do, might want to do, but nobody's approached them on that. Um, right, but I'm, what I'm saying is like this, this little entryway building, for example, could be a multi-use building that the community could use as well. You know, and yeah. it bring it would make commercial development off the main drive. It would be yeah. quiet. It would reduce <clears throat> traffic, which is a big issue on Grapevine. We live near yeah. that. Um, but obviously there would need to be some zoning changes, but I assume that's kind of the kind of thing that this group is talking about. Like if there is a big development, yeah. would we allow for a small amount of commercial space in there? Oh, sure. In addition to residential, which would potentially bring additional 
tax revenue. Maybe there's some co-working space in there. You know, I just, it's no, like it seems it, crazy it, day to have it all be residential. Yeah, it could. You know, there there are endless possibilities if zoning's in place and if there's somebody that wants to build it. Mm -hmm. um, right. So yeah, Deirdre, I'm sorry. Let's. Sorry, that's okay. Can I just mention that it's almost nine o'clock? We're coming up on two and a half hours, and yep. maybe we can continue this discussion and maybe the other two items because it's really um, time is passing. Okay. Um, Margaret, do you want to um, jump on to talking about the information available and reports? Whether yes, I just wanted to let the, the committee know that we've got all of the town's plans, all the reports, and a lot of information in a Dropbox account. So I'm going to send you all a link to Dropbox so that you can look at all of the um, whatever comes in. Um, is everyone comfortable with Dropbox? It's pretty simple. I just send you a link. The only problem is in our Dropbox, there's a lot of other information, but there'll be a folder that will be called the master plan. And then you can go in there and look for your, your documents in there. Just wanted to let you know that we'll be doing that. Okay, great. Thank you, Margaret. Thanks. Margaret, did you also want to talk about the Hamilton master plan? Yep. Um, so that meeting or, okay. Yeah, so we're also setting up a meeting between this group and the Hamilton Master Plan Committee. I've talked to Patrick uh, Reffert, their um, planning director over there, and he's going to talk to them tomorrow night when they meet to see if we can set up a meeting. I don't know if it'll be both the full committees or you know maybe just a few people from each town can get together just to talk about we're doing ours, what did you do with yours? What have you seen? For your challenges and where they're going so uh they're they're almost there i think they have their draft um i think one of their drafts is almost done that's great margaret that's the nice thing that's would be lovely to, to have that back and forth yes yeah it's perfect timing, really. um okay margaret thank you so much yep thank um, you. the next item is the meeting minutes um um catherine did you receive any edits on the Minutes. Um, don't know if Catherine is oh muted. Um, did anyone send in any comments on the meeting minutes? Okay. Um, all right, then do we want to um, have a motion to approve them? I move to accept the meeting minutes as written. Can you second. Have a second. Second. Okay, great. Then um, the meeting minutes um, for um, July 27th, 2022 are approved. I have to vote on it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so um, all in favor? Got to go roll call as it's Zoom. Aye. Uh, oh. Clay says yes. Petrolia says yes. Lowry, yes. Alexander, Vegan, yes. yes. Woodland, yes. yes. Oh, Woodland, yes. Evans, yes. Brody, yes. Priscilla, yes. Is that everyone? Okay, great. All right, now the meeting minutes are approved. Um, the next item is to set the next meeting date. Um, we were looking for late September, um, which will fall right before the first public forum. Um, and Margaret, you had suggested a few dates in um, the last two weeks of September, I believe. Yeah, I was looking at the last weeks in September um, because we want the committee to be together before the community forum so that everyone knows what their role is going to be and knows what's gonna happen at the community forum. Um, so I don't know whether you wanna look at the week of the 19th of, um, starts on the 19th, maybe on the, the 21st or the 28th, those are Wednesday nights, if those work well for the committee. September 21st is the first meeting of the Garden Club, which includes many Wenham residents. Okay, so then how, how's the 28th? I'll be uh, on travel the 28th and won't be able to make that. What about like the 22nd, even Thursday the 22nd? It doesn't have to be a Wednesday. I was just throwing that out. Sounds good to me. Okay. 
September 22nd, does, does this time, um, so it's Thursday, September 22nd. So I'm not available that day. You're not. I mean, that, you can go without me, but. Yeah. Is, is there a particular date, um, you know, the, the 20, um, the 27th, 20, maybe the 28th, is that better, the 28th? How many people, Phil, you can't make that date? So I'm traveling um, September 23rd to October 5th. Um, Laura, how much time do you think is good to have between the um, forum and the meeting? I think, you know, it, it's fine to be the, well, I would have a good, maybe a week, um, but I guess it could be a little closer to the October meeting too. Okay. But anyway, I could, we could also do a Monday night. I mean, there's the 19th. Um, um, and we'd be up, we're up against Conservation Commission on the second and fourth, right, Phil? So, the right, 19th, so that's, the, that's the 12th. Yeah, the 26th. 12th and 20th. Okay, so what about the 19th, the Monday night? Let's do it. Let's do it. 19th, Monday, 6 30. Mm -hmm. Okay. Everyone okay with that? Monday, mm -hmm. September 19th, 6 30. Okay, great. Okay. And then is there any other, uh, any other business that we haven't already covered? Yeah, hi, it's Ann Weeks. I'm the planning board chairman and I don't have any other business, but I did want to compliment the committee on the dedication and the level of energy tonight. I, I'm, I haven't seen the screen, I've only listened, but um, I just want to thank you very much for putting in the time and the effort on this really important project. So anyway, thanks. Well, Ian, thank you so much um, for saying that. And I, I couldn't agree with you more. I was really so pleased with all of the contributions and the, the thoughtful comments on um, throughout this meeting. So um, with that, um, if there are no other comments, um, shall we vote to adjourn? Please. Okay. Second. I motion. <laughs> all right, roll call, I guess. Um, Clay says yes. 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 Alexander, yes. Evans, yes. Roddy, yes. Colorado, yes. Michelle, yes. Is that everyone? Okay, very good. Well, thank you all so much. Really appreciate it.